Oh my god, I just looked at my video from Balak. My makeup was terrible. I looked like a vampire. And I look like a vampire just now. Oh my god, I look like... Well, I'm 49, so... Oh my god, I really look like a vampire. I can't vlog to save myself. Oh my god, my videos are really terrible. But they're not really meant to be professional, and I would... They're not, they're just meant to be some video diaries about what's going on just now. I just look like I've been, the videos in ballot, my makeup looks like I've been like drag. It's like, I look like Nesferatum. I look like, I look like absolute a vampire, honestly God. So, the makeup is not that much great, better, there. It's just... I just wanted to do a little update to that. It's just a little bit of Balak and just to say, guys, if you're ever struggling with things and you're going through a lot of things, I'm gonna I'm here for you. It's not easy losing a loved one. It's not easy battling mental health. It's not easy battling all these conditions and going to all these stuff that I'm waiting for results from. You head works over time and. You, you get to put a lot of things in your head and doctors say these big words to you and you're like, what the hell is this and what the hell is that? And it is, it's scary. And it can be like scary biscuits. I like the word scary biscuits. I didn't realise I had so much grey hair in my video in Bala because I was like, oh my God, my hair, my hair, my makeup, oh my God. I just wanted to give you an honest opinion and just honestly what I was feeling that day. I'm going, I'm getting, I've been getting counselling for a long time. I've got one of the rarest like, um, personalities in the world. Apparently there's 16 personalities and I've got um, the rarest one. Trust me to have the rarest one. I've got a disease called multiple exotosis which affects in one in 30,000 people. It's quite a rare genetic condition and that can lead to potential bone cancer between 1 to 6% or sometimes a little bit more. I ended up in having lots of operations when I was younger, lost a lot of schooling and ended up that finding out with dyslexia at university. Um, apparently now think I've got ADHD, which is Tendon Deficit Disorder, um, mental health issues, and it can be misdiagnosed. So I'm trying to get um, someone to diagnose me with that, and apparently they say I don't, but without you actually even seeing me, which I think is wrong, just, you've got to be able to see someone and actually get a diagnosis, what's wrong with them. Because a lot of like conditions can be misdiagnosed. Diagnosed. I may have an autoimmune disease, I may have cancer, I may not have cancer, but I've definitely got um, something running in my system. I've got an abscess in my system just now that's un underneath my, underneath in hospital for four weeks with expected, um, not four weeks, sorry, four days with expected septus and staph septus and that really, can be really dangerous. Um, so I'm waiting results of to see if I've got any sort of cancer. The reason why I'm really prudent right now is because my mum was misdiagnosed. She wasn't diagnosed correctly and for over a year before she was diagnosed. It was actually t uh, two years ago before she was diagnosed in 2017. I always knew there was something wrong. I could feel that. I could feel it in my bones. And I knew something was wrong and I wasn't being listened to. People said, no, there's nothing wrong with you. No, no, it's, it's mom, your mum's elderly. There's nothing wrong with her. And I knew, I just knew there was something wrong. I could feel that. And when you know, you know. And when people turn around and say it's in your head and it's you're and now it's like no, you're you're just making it up. 
you're not, you're not making it up. In 2017, my mum was diagnosed with stomach cancer. She was given the option of laser treatment. Supposed to get it every once a month. Every month. To try and stop it. She got it twice and then it stopped. And like for like a couple of months I kept on trying to find out why it was stopped. And people were saying to me no... We had an read once a month. We had to read every couple of months and I went, no, I've got the paperwork in front of me. It says it's a blue sheet. It says once a month. It's once a month. In my eyes, if you say once a month, it's once a month. So try and get hold of the doctor. Try and get hold of the consultant. And was given the number for the secretary. And then the secretary, I don't know what the hell she was on that day, put me through to CT. I'm like, really, really not good. I had to find a lot of things out myself. The nurse that my mum was given didn't, never contacted us. It was a breakdown, it was a failure somewhere. And I'm so lucky that I've got a cousin in the hospital. I'm so lucky I had someone in the hospital in the hospital that could help me. And this is not, you shouldn't be left to flounder like this. You shouldn't be left to, to figure out all this yourself. And this really affects the family members and this really affects people around the family. It's not just the, fa- the family person, it's not just the family member that's affected, it's everyone around them and it's just so difficult to get for un- people to understand and empathize. Yeah, they understand, they empathize, but until you go through it, you don't know. And I was always the impression that I would be this person that would know what to say. And and during that time, I lost a lot of friends to. Um, I was looking after my mum. It wasn't just me. My brother was, was doing it as well. And it was difficult, it was a difficult time, it was so stressful and it really led me to a breakdown, I'm not going to lie, it led me to a breakdown, it led me to being really isolated, it led me to to see, I didn't want to be a burden to my friends, I'll be there for them and I didn't want to be a burden, I didn't want to see what was going on and what I was feeling and the fact that I have this great fear in me that I don't want to be misguided like my mum and end up like with stage four cancer. And that's for me, it's going to be something that is really going to be prevalent in my family. We have the cancer gene in my family and I want to make like a, a journey, a documentary to talk about the impact of people and the impact of the stuff I'm doing on my YouTube channel will be just using just like information about the reason why I'm going to be doing the documentary, the reason why I think it's important to put it out there. I'll be doing lots of documentaries on women rights, um, human rights, human trafficking, child brides. I'm also going to do a documentary on date rights and the fact that it's um, sent a lot of countries in, in the world don't accept date rights. It's illegal in 77 countries to be gay. That's not on. It's illegal for a woman to vote. That's not on. It's illegal for certain countries and women don't have the right to be educated and right to read and write. We talk about slavery. We talk about Slavery, as in, in, in Africa, a lot of pe- there's a lot of slavery and that's still going on in Africa. Certain tribes leave other tribes, and it's not, it's not, it's not right. It doesn't matter what creed, religion, religion you are. I mean, everybody has a basic right to human rights. We all do. We all have that right to be able to live in a free, in a free world. The UK right now is going through a crisis and I don't even want to talk about it because it's so embarrassing. 
I'm Italian and I've got an Italian passport. I'm not allowed a British passport for some reason, even though I was born here. I'm not allowed one. I'm not going to give up my Italian passport on my kind right. I'm not. That's my father's heritage and that's my heritage. And I'm not going to do that. I refuse to do it. I don't see why I should. And this is not anything to do with political politics or any... I don't want any negative comments or any hate on my channel because that's not about me. I'm not about hate. I'm about truth coming out there. People, like, flee from countries like Syria, from countries like... A lot of countries are fleeing for a better life and they have the right to have a better life. But those countries should have the right, should be given, should be having civil rights and civil and humanity. And these countries in Africa are one of the richest countries in the world because they have minerals. But the Western society doesn't allow them to keep the wealth or... You have warlords in there that uh, that threaten people. You have the diamond trade, you have the gold trade, you have people, other people making money and people's misery, and that's not right. We should be helping to have fair trade. I love the I love the fact of the voluntary overseas organisation. I love the fact that UN should be going in and helping these countries to set up fair trade businesses so everyone has a right to be, to make, have a, have a life. You shouldn't have children in the world going through cash tans to, to make ends meet. That's not right. The biggest country in the world, in the state, one of the biggest, most powerful countries in the world in the United States, they have homelessness in the United States. They have over 70,000 homeless in LA alone. And homelessness is such a big deal. The fact that I've got a roof over my head. I'm so lucky. We live in a society that we want, and we want all these materialistic things. And I, mean, I think the UK is becoming like, a 51st state of America, and it's not, I don't want that, we have to, have to have our own, our own way of life, and love him, or love him, this Mr. Trump in power, and I seriously think some of the comments it makes on Twitter, and some of the comments it makes, it's like, do you actually think before you say stuff? Are you, the fact that in, from Scotland, the Ku Klux Klan was born in Scotland, and what a horrible heritage to have. We have, like, this heritage of, but Scotland is such a beautiful, beautiful country, it's full of beautiful people, and they're one of the most diverse countries in the world, and Glasgow's got the most diverse capital. If we've got all those of Asians, we've got all Chinese, we've got all those of coloured people, we've got all those. And the fact of listening to someone from Scotland with a Scottish accent is amazing. I love that. I love the fact I've got um, friends from all over the world in different nationalities. We should be celebrating that. We should be celebrating the fact that we are women helping other women to succeed. And we should be not being forced down, not being oppressed, not being told what to do. I'm, don't tell me what to do. I won't tell you what to do. Don't tell me what to do. That's wrong. I have a right to choose what I do in life. So as another guy, he's got the right to choose what he does in life. We all have that right. It's, it's a right of passage and it's a right of privilege. And I want to stop child marriages. I want to stop um, women, women ab women ab abuse across the world. I want to stop mental abuse of women across the world. But then there's women that mental abuse men, who beat up men. I want to stop that. There's a lot of male suicides out there as well. I want to stop that. I want to show to people that it, 
be a kind and be kinder to each other. Be kind to one another. Kindness doesn't cost anything. Have manners doesn't cost anything. Be be grateful for what you have. And look at other people that have less than you and see how can we make that, that difference? How can we help people to achieve the best that they can be? In this society in the UK, there's some people that think it's okay to be on the dole or not work. No, it's not. That's not a way of living. But then there's people that can't walk and that's fine. They can't walk but they've got an illness. They shouldn't be forced to walk if they have an illness and it's truly a medical condition. But then some people want to walk. You have a disability, you should have the right to walk and should not be told, oh, by the way, you're dyslexic. I'm not going to promote you because you have, you have dyslexia. That's discrimination. And that is discrimination. I'm dyslexic. I have special needs. I'm going to prove to people, no matter in life what disability you have, you can achieve anything you want. And don't let people dictate to you what you can and can't achieve. Find common ground with people. Try and find common ground. I can't stand people the right, the right wing parties. I can't stand the... The, the, flare, the flare up of Nazi, Nazi movements and stuff like that. I can't stand that. I can't stand anything like that. Bigotry, hatred. I can't stand that. Our forefathers fought in World War Two. My dad was meant to be a wireless operator behind enemy lines for the UK. He was recruited. He would have been sending what so many people sacrificed themselves for our freedom. And we take that for granted. We take it for granted. If you look at North Korea and what happened in the North Korea, if you look at what's happening in Africa, look at famine. We've got EU mountains of food. In this country we've got food banks. We have a Prime Minister that we didn't vote in for who's it's running the country. Brexit. Oh my God, Brexit. What are we doing? Brexit was so manipulated. It wasn't about this and that. Brexit, people were, were fed lies and fed all this, this stupid rubbish. And look what's happening. We're losing investment in the UK, left, right and centre. Are people leaving the UK because of uncertainty? We're going to, this is going to, this is going to be worse for us. I hope that the UK, we have to forget we're no longer an empire anymore. We're just a small court. And a big wheel. And at least in Italy, this corruption you see in your face, the UK, this corruption here, but it's underneath. It's underground. This racism here, and it's all underground. But hopefully in Scotland, we'll tackle that and we'll beat it. Let's, let's work together make the UK great and make Scotland great and Italy great as well and the whole world great as well love you guys take care